Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. We have a question today from George Kuhn, N9AUP, and he was having trouble with a drawing in a recent Ask Dave issue. Now, this is what you see here. This is the one he was having the trouble with. Now, here is the trouble he was having. Here's the V+. Plus from here and it comes through the relay and comes over to here now so the current is coming down I just just going to draw this is the current flow so if you had a relay with a relay coil right there the transceiver so-called transmit it can be some other thing like that this is what you plug your amplifier in actually when this is a logic one there's no current flowing here since it's a logic one you will have your relay closing only when this becomes a logic zero now when it becomes a logic zero what makes it a logic zero is that this transistor is energized with a positive pulse the current comes down here through here to ground thus closing the relay circuit okay all radios are like this this is called the send jack it's an RCA plug the terminal goes low when the transceiver transmits so this is a logic zero okay normally it's a logic one which means receive and this relay right here is in its off position which is up here which just pushes the signal tr through the device without changing it at all now when this goes low it will conduct this current which is actually being generated over here in the transmitter all right now here are their requirements the tr transmit receive control voltage and current must be less than 16 volts DC in other words V has to be less than 16 volts and when this closes the total amount of current used to close that relay needs to be less than one half amp okay now a lot of older transmitters will have higher control voltages because they're expecting a relay on this side rather than a transistor and they may have higher currents okay so here's the current flow it flows from in here down to in here the actual circuits the one in pink goes down to the chassis now this and this are grounded to each other that's the return path for the current so that's what's going on right here so I thought I'd talk just a little bit about how transistor logic is actually implemented some kind of a chip and the voltage usually goes in here and here or something like that but you've got an output and this output we'll call it a it's the a output when a is high that means and and it's often done this way to be absolutely sure you've got your positive rail and your negative rail and there will be a resistor here usually about 1k or 2k that connects right to there so if this is a logic one the a voltage will be anywhere from about 4.3 to 5 okay now this goes into the next logic chip okay this is an input this is plus 5 volts this is zero and of course that goes into there what happens here is that if this goes low and you want to be uh, less than say about two volts now the way this does this is it goes in here to a transistor the thing that limits the current is that little resistor right there that's why this isn't zero okay and that's being driven by something in here when this goes low we say we have a logic low 
okay, less than 0.2 volts, which will give you a logic low over here. Now the way that works is that this draws current, separate voltage from current in your mind. This draws current. The 1K resistor is quite large compared to this one. So this will try fruitlessly to pull this up because this is pulling it down so hard and you get current flowing this way and the voltage here which goes over to here is interpreted as a low. Now actually what happens over here is you've got an input to another transistor. Okay. That's the base, that's the collector, that's the emitter. And so when this is high, this is high and this transistor does not conduct. So the output of it is a logic zero. You've inverted the signal and a simple transistor will always invert the signal. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is that whenever it is a logic one, you have no or very little current flowing in this direction. If it's a logic zero, you have a fair amount of current flowing in this direction because this transistor is conducting. Now, in some logic circuits, we note that A conjugate is equal to opposite of A. Okay, so if this is a one, this is a zero. If this is a one, this is a zero. Okay, now, what we find with this sort of thing, which is how TTL logic and really all logic is done these days, is that the switching frequency is how quickly this can get any energy that's in here out of there so that it can pull us down. For TTL logic, the delay, the device delay, it has to drain the circuit, remember, is approximately five nanoseconds. It's extremely short. But this does put an upper speed limit on how fast the system can run. So different kinds of logic, CMOS and so on, different voltages and so on, less charge, therefore less time to drain it and get the outputs right, and so you'll have less gate delay with the voltages. But this is something a lot of people don't understand. They think a one means a one or a high voltage and a zero means zero volts. It doesn't really. What a one means is that there's no current flowing and you'll often see if you want even a pull-up resistor on that to keep noise from pulling it down accidentally. And then if this is a low, then there is current flowing backwards in the system down over here to complete that circuit. We almost universally use ones and zeros to show how this works and we don't worry too much about you know where current is flowing or something like that. We just want our one and we want our zero. But in actual practice what is happening is that when you bring a logic device to zero it means it sinks current from the following logic array down to zero. It shuts that down it shorts, not quite shorts, but shorts that circuit so that the stuff will go down there. And that's how this is working here. All transmitters, when you plug the amplifier into the transmitter or output circuit or whatever, a high means that this will de-energize the relay and it'll go to receive. Why de-energize? Why not energize? Well, you're going to spend most of your time in receive. So it only puts it in transmit when it gets that transmit thing. This is how this works down here. A logic high does not sink any current to speak of and a logic low sinks all the current to speak of. And we note that the devices themselves have a voltage range at which they interpreted it to be a zero or a one. We also know that in complex logic circuits, there are race conditions, and this means, it's just like a car race, if one signal gets there before the other, the output can have a different outcome than if the other got there first. And given that the TTL switching delay is only about five nanoseconds, if you skip a couple gate delays to get over to here, you can see where there'd be a problem. 
This is why in all practical electronics we don't have just gate arrays. We have timing. What happens is you get a time stroke and then the gates have the way to propagate. They have time and then on the next time stroke they interpret the income. This is what keeps everything in sync. This is why our computers have clocks in them. The clock is actually a timer array. Interesting little point, if you have a sine wave that's called a VFO, variable frequency oscillator, creates a sine wave. If you have something that creates periodic square waves, then we don't call that a VFO, we call that a clock. And that is how these things work. So there you have a little, little outside the usual kind of thing, but it's nice to know sometimes how these things work. And there's nothing wrong with getting a few gates. They're dirt cheap, I mean pennies a piece and uh, playing with them just to see how they work. So there you have it. If you'd like to help out this channel, become a member, become a subscriber. Until we next meet, 73.